Hello Compulsive Quilters, welcome back to my film clips. Today I'm going to be running through the basics of how to position something in the machine hoop. I'm working from the Hen House Applique Quilt Pattern by Claire Turpin. So here is the finished design that I've just done and I like it. I like it. It's got a little bit of contrast there and that the pocket seems to go well with the um, chicken body. One of the things that I might point out is um, when I make one of these, I make a mirror, I will often print in a mirror image, so I don't make a separate design for it. Um, and sometimes you wanna change things out. This is one of those things where your cartoon really can become useful. So on, on the cartoon, I was looking and the chickens are facing outward. And since they're in the center of the um, the center of the design, I wanted these two chickens to face inward from their direction. So this is from row three, one, two, three, and this one is from row four. And so I changed the orientation and I could easily see this when I was working on my little cartoon here. And um, it's easy to get lost in the details when you're working with something like this. So it's good, like um, all of these I like, they're all kind of facing inward, and all of these are facing inward. And so I like most of my chickens to face toward the center. It just leads your eye in. The hen house quilt has spread into my dining room and I have a, uh, a, my table fully stretched out so that I can use it for cutting and positioning and just preparing for this. I have all my designs laid out. I have a, a ton of stabilizer ready and a, an extra hoop. I have um, all of my blocks that are both completed and incompleted in stacks to where they belong in the quilt. And I have them on an ironing board. So like I said, things are just getting um, growing as far as this project goes. With all of these designs, with all of these designs, one of the things that I want to make sure that I do is when I remove it from the hoop, I want to make sure that I retain my little card here that tells me um, all of the pertinent information about it. So I'll just repin it and then I will add these to my row stacks. And that way I know that it goes on row number four and it's um, number three as far as its position. As I move on through my workflow, the next thing that I'll do is go back and I'll refer to my map and I'll decide that I have another chicken here and one here. And I want to pick up my block from row five and it's in the number five position down the row and lay it into my hoop. So I have a nice green piece of fabric here and this is for my block, I've already decided that. And I'm just going to take my pin off and I will pin it on there as soon as I get this set into the block, or my block set into my stabilizer. So I've taken my block, which is 12 and a half inches square, and I have creased it right here and right here. From there, what I want to do is line it up in the center of my stabilizer, and it goes off of the center markings that are on my hoop. And I've just matched up the center with a chalk line and at the top, the bottom, and the sides and made a target there for where I put my fabric. I'll open up my fabric like this and just smooth it out a little bit. And all the lines are still lining up. I lay my hand on my block right here and just let it slide into the hoop. And once it slides into the hoop, it's uh, still sitting in its position on the top. And I'll just press it down on the bottom and then make sure that it's nice and snug and tighten it up. Since I'm certain that this stabilizer here is out of the field where I will be embroidering, I will go ahead and pin my chicken to my work area. And it's the extra set of cartoons that I made. And like I said, it has row five, chicken number five, or block number five, and, this, uh, and the name of the chicken that I'm working on. 
So all my details are fresh on my mind, and the one thing is that I want my chicken um, to turn inward. So I will look at my machine, and I have a tiny little image here, and I'm noticing right off that my hoop size is wrong. I need a, um, a 360 by 200 hoop size. So I will switch that. And check the right one. And then I'll get a 360 by 200. And my chicken is facing in the right, and I want her to face to the left. So I will do a mirror image, and that will change the direction that my chicken sews out. Now you're to the point where you can just start stitching out your design. At this uh, juncture, it doesn't matter much whether it's applique or whether it's just straight embroidery. If you're doing applique, have your colors ready for your material, your thread, and your bobbins all positioned out in the order that you'll, have, that you'll be working on them. This will make your project go, go much easier as you work along. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe.